And by the end of this video, we will have created an enemy that can move from left to right independently and change directions whenever he recognizes that he has collided with a wall. Let's get started. It wouldn't be much of a game if we didn't have any enemies to deal with, so let's go ahead and add one. For this, I'm going to go into Pixel Adventure 1, and I'm just going to go to the main characters, and I'm going to take, uh, say this mask guy here, who will be my enemies. I think he's supposed to be a character, but that's fine, he's going to be an enemy for this game. I'm going to take this run animation and just drag it into the scene. Uh, that's going to go ahead and already create an animation for me. So I'm going to go to my animations folder and I'm going to call this enemy run dot anim. And immediately you can't see him. Uh, let's just rename this first to enemy. So since we can't see him, I have to go to the sprite renderer, change his sorting layer to game and I'll put him at level five. He's also very small. So if you look at our virtual guy who we're using, we set the pixels per unit to 15. And the mass dude is currently at 100. So we could set it to 15. I'm going to set it to maybe 20 just so he's a little smaller than my player since he is an enemy. I want to be able to like jump on him and jump over him. So that looks fine over there. And I just like to also keep my animations a little bit organized. So I'm going to go in here, say player anims, and then I'll move all my player animations in there. I'm going to rename this enemy animator and then I'll make a new folder to put that in as well. Next we'll need to go to the enemy and we will need to give him a rigid body 2D component and a collider of some sort. I already have this open so I'll just add a box collider 2D and I'm probably gonna have to resize it because it doesn't quite match up with the sprite so I'm just gonna manually adjust this by dragging the points after I click the edit collider and sure we'll see how that looks. And then I'll go to add component, type rigid body 2D and put that in. Uh, right away, I'm just gonna scroll down here to constraints and freeze the rotation because I don't want the enemy to be rotating in the Z. Next, we'll need to give the enemy an actual way to move. So I'll go into the scripts folder, right click and create a new C sharp script and we will just call this enemy movement. Within our enemy movement script, we'll go ahead and start by declaring a few variables. Let's make a rigid body 2D and we can call that rigid body. We'll make a serialized field private sprite renderer and call that sprite renderer. And we'll need a couple of input variables as well. One will be our enemy speed, which I'll assign a default of 3F. And we can also create a start direction to determine what direction the enemy will be moving in. This will only ever be one or minus one, so we can just use an integer for that. We'll also need a private int current direction, and then we'll also need private float half width. What we'll be doing is using raycast to determine the direction our enemy should be moving in. If you've been following along with this playlist series since the beginning, this will already be a bit familiar to you. But if you're just joining now, don't worry, we'll go over this part in a bit more detail. Under start, I'll say half width is equal to our sprite renderer dot bounds dot extents dot x. And we'll say our current direction is equal to our start direction. I'll also put private before start just because this is how I like to do things as well as here. I'll also rename update to fixed update which is similar to update in the sense that it runs every frame, but whereas update runs every frame of your computer cycle, fixed update runs every frame of the Unity's physics cycle. So basically we use fixed update when we're handling movement via a rigid body, whereas we use regular update when we're just dealing with updating the player's transform directly. In here, we'll say rigid body dot velocity is equal to vector two dot right times speed times current direction. And we can just go ahead and we'll test this out. So first I'm going to click on the enemy. I'm going to make sure that the script is actually attached. Okay, I have attached it here. Make sure you do as well. I'm gonna drag the rigid body in. I'm going to drag the sprite renderer in. Make sure speed and start direction have values. And there is going to be a bit of a bug. So I'm just going to drag the enemy up to make it a little more obvious. We're gonna hit start and see what happens. 
Okay, if you notice, our enemy is moving right, but he's kind of floating like he's anti-gravity. Um, his gravity and his mass is actually fine. The reason that this happens is because within the update uh, script, we're, we're using vector2.write. I wanted to show it to you this way first because it may seem like this is the obvious thing to do, but I'm just going to write a comment here. Vector2.write is equal to 1 and 0. It, it has an x value of 1 and a y value of 0. This essentially means that every frame we're reassigning our player's y velocity to be 0, which isn't what we want. So in order to fix this issue, we're going to make a new private vector2 variable up here, and we'll call this movement. Then within fixed update, we'll say movement.x is equal to speed times current direction, and movement.y is equal to our rigid body's velocity.y, just so there's never any change with it. Then we can delete this from the right side of the equation and just assign rigidbody.velocity to be equal to movement. If we hit save, go back and test this out, we can see that the enemy falls a lot more normally now. Although he still just walks into a wall without changing directions, so let's fix that next. Back here in the enemy movement script, we'll make a new method. We'll call this set direction, and then we'll create it down below. We're going to make private void set direction, and here's where we're going to use our ray casting. We're going to say if physics 2d dot raycast and then open some parentheses and first it wants to know the start position of the raycast and again don't worry i'll explain what this is doing in a little more detail but we're just going to write it out first we're going to say transform dot position and then we're going to say vector 2 dot right we are going to pick the direction the raycast is going we could pick right or left for now we're just going to say right then we're going to put in the length of the raycast. This is going to be this variable we set over here, half width. And then we'll give it a little bit of offset. We'll just say 0.01f. And then we're going to tell it what layer it should intersect with. This is going to be layer mask dot get mask ground. Then we need to do one more thing to make this work okay. And we're going to say and and rigid body dot velocity dot x is greater than zero. We'll finish that off, do our squiggly brackets, and if this is the case, we'll say direction, or rather current direction, times equals minus one. Uh, it's just an integer, so just times equals minus one. Let me put some comments in, and then we'll explain this in a little bit more detail. Okay, we're going to draw a ray starting at the center of our enemy, pointed to the right, check to see if that raycast is intersecting with a wall. And we also want to make sure our enemy is walking right because this will prevent a bug where they might get stuck walking back and forth. And to make it easier to visualize, I've written debug.drawRay, which is just going to physically show a graphic representation of the raycast. Let's see what this actually looks like. If I turn on draw gizmos, you can see that this is basically what the raycast looks like here. It's this red line, and if this red line intersects with our wall, then the enemy's going to change the direction. And you can see it worked just fine on the right wall, but it, we have to set it up for the left wall separately. Also, just to make sure, make sure that your ground layer is actually set with layer ground or whatever we're putting in the layer mask name, or else it won't work. So within this set direction, we're now going to write an else if statement to handle hitting the left wall. And as a little challenge, you can go ahead and try to write that yourself. But if you still need the help, no worries, we're gonna do that here. So let's go ahead and say else if physics2d.raycast transform.position, then we're going to say vector2.left and then we're going to say half width plus 0.1f. We probably could just copy paste this whole thing to be honest. Get mask and then we're going to put ground. And then we're going to say and and rigid body dot velocity dot x is not greater than zero, but make sure it's less than zero because now we're checking for the other direction. And here we can just copy paste this again and swap our current direction around. And just for good measure, we can also draw this out to be facing the other way too. 
Let's go back and see if that works. Now we can see that it does work. You can also see that the Raycast looks like it's way too long right now. And that we've seen the same issue actually with our player before. And this has to do with the way that the enemy sprite itself is set up. So if we go and take a look at this enemy sprite, if I go into his sprite editor, we can see that there's a bunch of empty pixels around the borders. So to fix this and make sure that our enemy is actually intersecting the wall properly, I'm just going to click on each one of these sprites and just manually drag the blue border over so it looks like it's properly intersecting with the enemy sprite on either side. Let me fix this up and you can do the same. There we go. We can see that this red line looks a lot better now. It's a lot closer to where the sprite should actually be. And one thing I also did was I just adjusted the top and bottoms of the sprite because I didn't want him to look like he was bouncing as he walked. But that was my choice. You might want to just leave that as is. That's totally up to you. Finally, back in the code, we can delete these debug.draw rays. And one thing we last thing we want to do is flip his direction he's facing. So we can say sprite renderer dot flip x equals true over here and sprite renderer dot flip x equals false over here. One final check and we can see that when he hits the wall over here, he changes directions and that looks pretty good right now. As one final thing, if I was to walk into the enemy, I could actually stop his movement. This won't matter in the future as we're going to eventually be making sure that he hits our player. But if you did want to change this right now, you could just give the, play the enemy more mass and then he's heavier and you can't really push him anymore. Or you, alternatively, you could make him super light and easy to push. Again, that's totally up to you. We should also check to see if our logic works properly if we set him to start in the other direction first by setting our start direction to minus one. If we hit play to test, well, we can see that he does indeed move to the left first, but he doesn't flip properly, and he only flips properly once he collides with a wall, in which case he starts to change the direction he is facing. The reason this happens is because here in start, we never actually set the way he should be facing first, we only told him the direction that he should be going. So let's just fix this by saying sprite renderer dot flip x and we can use a ternary operator here which is essentially a one line if statement. We can say start direction equals equals and then we can either pick one or minus one and we'll say question mark. So if he is moving to the right, then we should say false. We will not flip his direction. And otherwise, we it's going to be true. We are going to flip his direction. Basically, is the direction one? In which case, don't flip the direction. Otherwise, yes, flip the direction. Let's test. And here we go into play mode. And yes, now he properly also faces the correct direction when the game starts. In the next video, we'll have our enemy walking towards us, but we'll also have this enemy up here who can properly detect a ledge without hitting a wall and change directions accordingly. See you there.